Hi, my angels. As promised, let's get right into it. This is your general tarot or greeting with me, Tigra of Sacred Sagittarius. May you be blessed and may you receive these energies. Please share, like, and comment so that the video can get motivated and upgraded <laughs> through the YouTube algorithm. Let's cleanse the space. Heavenly Father, I thank you for bringing me and my subscribers and cross watches together. Cause a blessing prayed for, you know my mantra, what is to be shown will be known. And what is not to be known, I truly believe will not be seen. All notifications and any other intros and updates will be posted and said after the reading. Okay, let's get into the energies. Let's go into this particular tarot deck. What are the energies, the general energies for Sagittarius? These are general messages. It is timeless. You can come back to this video at any point or time during your life. And this message may resonate with you. It might not resonate with you today. But like I said, you never know. So always come back and check. And I love to hear your comments when it does resonate. Okay, what is the messages for my Sagittarius? Okay. I'm not starting out too much in a good note, but let's see. So the overall energy, I do see many of my Saggies this weekend. You're, ba you're balancing a lot of things. This could be balancing between your commitment to two jobs, um, multiple responsibilities, two relationships, right? Um, two decisions that some of you might have to make, um, I'm, I'm coming up with. Um weighing out your options so a lot of your energy this weekend is in the duality of what do i do how do i choose so there could be a choice or a major decision between one or two options that you've been kind of delaying but it's coming now to a fold where you're going to have to make a choice that accompanied with the nine of swords the I'm sorry, yeah, the Nine of Swords, the Five of Wands, and with the High Fit, this has been a challenging time for many of you where you have been living, trying to balance things out, your emotions, your feelings, maybe having the foot in one door of a relationship while trying to step out of another, working maybe two jobs where you really only are committed to one job, but you need that second job to make ends meet. Balancing out money, borrowing from Peter to pay to Paul, and knowing that you can't keep doing that because you're going to end up in the red. So you're trying to balance it together. You're trying to tumble and, and just keep it all together. But because of this, you are losing sleep. You are stressed out and it's coming to a fold. Something has to give. We can only juggle and shift energy back and forth and pour into one cup from another for so long. Eventually, we've got to come up with a game plan. We've got to have closure. We've got to make a decision on what it is that we need to do. Who do we need to be with? What job do we need to stick with? What direction we need to be in? We can't be all over the place. It's easier to have one mind focus on one thing and accomplish that goal than trying to juggle two things and ping pong back and forth it gives you frustration it gives you stress um sleep apnea all these type of physical things can come upon you and i'm not a doctor and I'm, I'm not progressing or suggesting any medical things but what i'm saying is when we are not whole when we are stressed stress can lead to physical things happening in your life and when you are stressed it can affect medical things physically within you. So when you're dealing with a lot of stress, the main thing the angels are saying, get yourself checked out, go to your physician, keep up with your appointments. And if you haven't made an appointment, make an appointment because stress can lead to bigger things, seen and unseen. In addition to the stress of you having to juggle between two decisions, some of you are living two lives. 
You're not living your authentic truth. You could be living one life for one set of people and pretending to be something else to soothe another. We have to live our authentic self and only live true to who we are. Stop trying to be everything to everybody because that will always backfire. A lot of you are running into conflict on top of your stress because of the multiple facets of the duality of the situations you have placed yourself in. It's hard enough, ladies and gents, to deal with one romantic partner. Imagine dealing with two. You could be serious with one, and the other one you might think is not serious. You're just having fun with them, but you don't know what they're thinking, right? They could be really getting serious in the background. You have two jobs. You work two jobs. One job is going to pull your energy and your attention more than the other. It's difficult to work two jobs and give them both your undivided attention. You're going to slack off from one job. So whenever you're trying to juggle a couple of things, remember, it's really difficult to give it your equal time and energy. As you can see here with the two of pentacles, that's not even, that's not an even scale that balancing, but one pentacle is higher than the other. It takes a lot to be able to balance it and keep them even, give them your equal time, your equal share, your equal respect. And this is where the demand for you to be on an even scale with all the things that you're trying to do puts the stress on you, causes the conflicts in your life, conflicts within yourself, and then conflicts within the people, employees, employees, or persons that you're trying to be everything to and for. With the card of the higher fit, this is where you need that break. You need that spiritual intervention. You need to go back to self, tap within, go to your higher spiritual guides, talk to your angels, talk to your ancestors to give you guidance, to help you to refocus and to eliminate some of the stress and the conflict that you have in your life, to help you maybe not work so hard to balance everything in your life, but maybe to let go of some things that you really can't balance anymore in your life. Sometimes, you know, we want to be successful so much and we, we don't want to say that, you know, we're giving up or that we failed at something because, you know, we feel like we're so optimistic we can do it all. But at the end of the day, sometimes you can't. And it's okay to come to that fork in the road and realize that you can't because it's giving you stress. You're losing sleep. It's causing conflict internally and externally. So when you tap into your higher self or you tap into your spiritual energies and guides that help you, they're calling out to you in this reading for you to take it easy, to stand back and let go of what you can no longer manifest or what you can no longer balance. Let's get a clarifier. Well, many of you, the situation of dealing with more than one partner or having someone in your life romantically that is dealing with you and someone else is definitely showing up what is also could be causing many of you to lose sleep. So even remember with readings, the energy could be talking about you or it could be talking about your significant other or others that are close to you. So even if you're not the one that's stepping out of the relationship or dating someone on the side, your partner could be dating someone on the side and the conflict of them cheating on you is having an impact on you because you're picking up on their vibes. You're picking up on their slacking in the relationship, the excuses they're giving you, the ghosting, the gaslighting, all the negative things that come with a relationship when someone is interfering in the relationship or your partner is stepping out of the relationship. Clarifying the five of wands, we have, oddly enough, we have the nine of wands. So you are very, very defensive as you should be against any type of attack and any type of conflict someone is bringing towards your door. 
if people are challenging you because of your decisions and the way how you live your life or the way how you go about doing things, maybe, yeah, you do put more on your shoulder than what you should. You're going to stand your ground. You're going to want to defend yourself and say, I'm doing the right thing. This works for me. If this is the way I want to live my life, so be it. So you're going to be very, very defensive, almost, I don't want to say combative, but very irate and pushing back off of others who are coming at you, even if they're coming at you in a form of help trying to get you to see the bigger picture of the situations you have yourself in. Clarifying the hyphen. Wow, here we go again with the nine of swords. It's getting to the point that so many of you have so much conflict. You're overstressed, you're overworked, you're tired. You're dealing with failed relationships or relationships that require so much of your attention and not in a good way that spiritually it is draining you as well many of you have slipped away from your spiritual practices because you're over consumed with trying to balance all these unleveled and uneven needs and relationships that you have in your life and anything that takes you away from your spiritual base your spiritual truth that doesn't allow you the space to focus and to connect with your higher being, you will always feel tormented. You will always lose sleep. You will always feel and want for more. No matter how much you try to balance, it's never going to be the complete picture that you want. Let's clarify the two of pentacles, the knight of cups. For some of you, it might take someone coming in showing you a side of love and attention and showing you a way or speaking to you in a way to calm your fears, to claim your anxiety and say to you, Saji, what are you doing? You're beautiful. You're great. And I know you want it all and you want to do it all, but you, you're on overload right now. Let's, let's work with what we can work with. Let's shed what we don't, what is causing us burden and strife. If it's a relationship, that person is cheating on you or you're cheating on them, whatever it is, let the person make a decision. If it's work, you're working two jobs, but you know you can't give your undivided attention to both, then you've got to stick with the job that gives you the clarity, the job that pays you the most. Take a break from that second job until... Your head is clear again, and then maybe find another job that can pay you more in addition to your regular job, but that you're able to give both of them your undivided attention. A lot of people work two jobs, but if the two jobs are equally demanding, it is quite difficult. Find a job maybe that is artistic or, or creative in, in, by design, where you can make decent money, but it's fun, it's lightweight, it's not that heavy. Or you learn how to maneuver the demands on your time and the contracts that you sign and the bids that you make, make sure you're making them to make it make sense for you and your lifestyle and your timing because you are obligated to another employer. When we're talking about family life, dealing with multiple things going on, trying to hold it together, financial issues. Again, just taking that break, this person coming in, the Knight of Cups, might not have a lot to give you. Could be a friend, doesn't have to be a lover. Could be a close relative. This person, though, is in their middle years, and they come with a different type of energy that you might not be used to. But they come with love and sincere care for you. To say to you, hey, take a break, come with me, let's let's have a talk. If You can't be reached spiritually because you're blocked and your energies are just over the place. Maybe someone can reach to you emotionally. And that's what this Knight of Cups is trying to do. Reach out to you emotionally to tell you that 
you know, you're doing a great job, and I know you're trying to do, you know, a fantastic job, but you're on overload. You need to take a break. You need to step back and maybe shed some things in your life or curtail some things or lower your vibration in certain energy. So don't give your energy to too many things at once. We also get, wow, these two cards came out together, the Hermit and Strength. Reminding you that your strength only comes from being within and going within. And when you don't have time to go within, you don't have time to go into your intuition. And you can't have time to tap into and connect with your angels, with the higher sources, with your ancestors, with the clarity that you need to help you to regroup and to regain strength and to refocus so you can say, hey, maybe I have too much on my plate. Maybe I can't do it all. I can't do multiple things as much as I want to. Physically, I can't. So you might have the strength in one sense, but you you don't have it in another. So be strong enough to know, Sagittarius, when you need to take time for self to regroup, to rethink. It's not a bad thing. It's the best thing to do for you when you say, hey, let me just step back and kind of look at where my life is, where my emotions are, where's my feeling, my energies. You know, why am I full of anxiety? Why am I losing sleep? Why am I anxious? Why are certain relationships not working out? You know, what, what's wrong here? What, what am I doing or not doing? At the bottom of the deck, we get the fool. And sometimes you have to take that leap of faith. You have to take the leap of faith that even though what you were trying to do to the best of your ability to juggle so many things that, you know, at one time didn't work out, it's not for loss. You've learned something from this process. You've learned yourself. You've learned the maximum of your strength. You, you've learned your capabilities as to what you can handle and can't handle. When you're talking about either you or your partner dealing with one or more persons in a love situation, realizing that that is not a win-win for anyone, that at the end, someone is going to be hurt. Someone is going to lose because you have to choose. You can't keep stretching yourself thin between two people because someone is going to want more. One of those lovers are going to want more, whether it's you or the other person. When it comes to your finances, again, borrowing from Peter and giving to Paul, you can only do that but for so long because at some point you might not have money from Peter to give to Paul. When it comes to dealing with multiple jobs, and you're trying, I get it, you want to get on your grind, there's goals that you've made and things that you want to do for this year, but at what cost? At the cost of your health, at the, at the cost of your rest, and all the other things that you have on your plate? If you're trying to work more than one job, and like I said, your second job is causing you to call out on your first job, or you're late now at your first job because you're not getting enough sleep, you're latching out. You're acting out. You're not yourself because you're stressed with so much responsibility. Both jobs might have high demands and fast turnarounds and things that you need to get done at both jobs at the same time. So is it worth it to make the extra bit of money if in the long run it's going to affect your first job? Do you want a chance losing your first job, which is your real breadwinner? because you want to get a second job just to get an extra couple of dollars. So it's taking time to evaluate how much you can actually juggle Sagittarius, how much you can keep that even balance in your life this weekend. So I hope that if you don't take the time this weekend to challenge yourself about the inequality or the unevenness and the stress of you putting on so much in your plate, how to actually back away from it and make it make sense that you find the time, if not this weekend, maybe sometime during the week or next weekend. With the energy of the lovers, accept who you are and who you are not. Is everything. You're a star. Shine bright for the world to see. Listen, if someone is cheating on you or you are cheating on someone, again, that balance. Are you really being true to yourself? 
if someone is cheating on you, we know they're not really being honest and true to you, right? So acceptance of who you are, is that what you want to be known for? To be a cheater or to be someone's side chick? No. And you don't want to be known to be the one to do the cheating. So you're a star and a star shines bright, but a star shines bright when it is in the limelight, when it's in its truth, when it is the focus of integrity and peace and love and light and everything that is honest. With the energy of the strawberry moon, summer solace, which will be upon us in June, allow the sun into your life and bring the clarity and warmth you desire. Allow yourself to see what you're missing. Sometimes, as a Sagittarius, we call out or we cry out in conflict or we cause conflict, we cause anxiety in our life because we want so much and we get disturbed that as much as we try to obtain, we still can't get what we desire. We have to learn to bring that warmth within our heart of what it is that we have and what we can still manifest, but enjoy the in-between and stop putting so much stress to obtain, to master, to get, to collect. Just allow yourself to see what's missing in your life and accept it and work towards it, but don't be disappointed because of it. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Burning the sage and the palo santo. With the wolf moon, without the darkness, we cannot appreciate the light. New beginnings are ahead. Go outside and howl at the moon. So even though some of us might be going through struggles, <coughs> excuse me, I usually have water by me, but this time I don't. So you might get a little hoarse voice until we get to the end. Um, the darkness that we're in, those challenging times, those are the times that we learn the most. That is the time that we as a Sagittarius have the opportunity to tap into our strength, to tap into our humility and the love that's within us and our spiritualness to shine light upon the issues and to be a light upon our darkness. At the bottom of the deck with the warm moon, as Gaia awakens, this is a sign for you to awaken to new possibilities. Start hunting in earnest. The early bird catches the worm. And with that in saying, it's like as you realize that you can't do everything and be everything, that you set the seeds for a new foundation, a new way of life. You, you, you're revamping yourself. You're awakening to the possibilities not to the possibilities of loss because you have to give up or shed certain things or make certain decisions, but to the possibilities that it now leads new opportunities. Because when you shed the excess in your life and the, the pressures and the demands of you having to balance so much, then you're left with, okay, this is what I can handle. I'm good here. I can enjoy life. I, the stress is gone. The battle you know, all that anxiety, all that inner and external conflict is gone. You're in a good space. We also get the card of achievement for this weekend. Chase your dreams, Sagittarius. You may be surprised by where they lead you. And when you give yourself the opportunity to stop trying to balance and to do so much things in life, but just chase your dreams one dream at a time, you will be surprised, Sagittarius, where your dreams will lead you. And in addition to chasing your dreams, if you have faith, having faith grows when you act without knowing the end result. And for many of us, that is what causes a lot of conflict in us trying to handle and make decisions in life. The fact that we want to know the end result before we even start or we anticipate what the end result should be. And then we're saddened. We're, we, we're, we feel beaten up. We feel like we're a loss or a failure when it doesn't have that ending, that fantasy ending or outcome that we thought. You have to have faith in the process and you have to have faith that what you want to manifest and what you dream is going to happen, but it might happen just a twist 
or a tad bit different way. The ending might not be the ending that you want, but it's the ending best for you, the ending that the universe sees fit for you. And with passion, with your steadfast energy and your commitment to life and your commitment to checking yourself and realizing when you have too much in your plate and when to let go, you can let your passion take flight. Give yourself the energy and the time and the fortitude to take flight in the things that sincerely mean to you. Even if it means you have to forego some other stuff. Doesn't it feel good when you accomplish one thing and you fully have done it than to do two or three things and you have step in in all of those areas? So this is why we have to take everything one step at a time. Yes, if you can multitask, that's great. But if you can't, don't force yourself to. With the law of eternality, live like you are dying. The angels want you to know that time is not on any of our sides. And while you're trying to rush to do so many things, you're not enjoying life. You're putting stress on yourself. You're causing anxiety. You're causing illness. You're putting yourself in relationships that are toxic. Eternity is promised on a different side of spirituality. But while you're here upon this earth, it is only here for a short time. So live your life and don't overextend yourself or overburden yourself so that you lose sight and focus of what is really important. The final card for this weekend, we get seeing the positive. I can look at what I have, what's been completed and what's been done to see myself clearly. And maybe in closing, that's all you need to do when you feel stressed, when you feel overburdened, when you feel that you can't balance it all out. When you feel that you have to make a choice because you can no longer stand between two situations or two people or two jobs. Look at what you have. Appreciate what's been completed and what's been done. And see clearly the truth in the situation, the truth in the matter. Weigh out what works for you and what does it, what you should hold on to and what you should release. And if someone comes in emotionally to show you or to guide you or to help you in that process, accept their love, accept whatever little wisdom they might give you and help and encouragement. I hope this reading has been a blessing to you.